Nators and friends, welcome or welcome back to the Seedling Stitch Knitting Podcast, and we are at episode eight. My name is Athena, and I am a Nater and a PhD student in mechanical engineering based in Vancouver, Canada. And I am also a knitting teacher at my local yarn store called Wet Coast Wools. And in fact, I just came back from my first in-person knitting lesson, and it went great. Uh, I had two students. One of them is completely beginners, and the other one had some experiences with English knitting style and wanted to learn continental style. So I had some fun with tuning up to the,、uh, two students of different levels and gave them what they need.、Uh, it has been good.、Uh, it's really amazing for me because I learned knitting at the same store. Less than one year ago, I learned to knit last year in December, and can you believe it? Now I'm teaching knitting at the same yarn store to new students, and I'm very proud of the progress I have made in knitting. I've just been addicted to knitting.、Uh, coming back to my knitting podcast,、uh, this is my little corner in YouTube where I talk about my knitting projects and share some of the knitting books I have. Uh, I'm a big fan of collecting knitting books, especially some Japanese ones or like Chinese or translation. So if you're interested in learning something about East Asian knitting culture, you can stick with me. So in this episode, I am going to talk about some summer knitting projects. I'd also like to talk about my knitting journal. I just started this handwritten knitting journal, and I can talk about what I write in them and how it helps me keeping track of my knitting. Projects, so、uh, grab your knitting or some cold drink with you, and let's get started. So it's finally the summer season here. It's super hot from yesterday, maybe like twenty six degrees Celsius here. Eventually, and before that, it's just been like twenty degrees Celsius, and it's been pretty cool. And now it's the perfect time for summer knitting, and. I have. I don't have finished objects, but I have a few work in progresses, and this is the first one work in progress I made. This is the、uh, Provence top designed by、uh, Ekaterina Barabova, and、uh, her Instagram name is this cozy net. And she recently had her birthday and is having a lot of discount on her patterns, including this one. Uh, so if you're interested, you can check that out.、Uh, so this is my first lacy summer top pattern, and I am knitting it with a Chinese yarn that I got. I talked about this yarn a couple episodes ago.、Uh, this is a China hemp and cotton blend yarn from a Chinese company called、uh, Hui Guixian or Love Yarn. This yarn is almost a fingering weight, but、uh, the original pattern design. Is knitted in DK weight. I think the recommended yarn was、uh, Sandnis Garn Dual and Sandnis Garn Lina. And I cannot match that gauge with this fingering weight yarn, so I had to tune that to a finer gauge.、Um, the, I I did a couple of swatches before I started this project. So the original pattern uses four millimeter needle, and I think the the best I can do is a three point five millimeter needle, which gives me this、uh, slightly like a、uh, see through fabric. And I also tried a three millimeter needle, but I decided to go with three point five millimeter needle because、um, I am doing this lacy pattern. And if I am using the needle,、uh, if I am using the three millimeter needle, I was afraid that、um, this like cute lacy design would just be too small. And this is supposed to be like the lavender flower. Um, but if the hole is too small, it 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 just doesn't look as good. So I decided to go with the three point five millimeter needle, and I knitted the XL size of the pattern to match the S size that I am. And this is how I did the calculation to decide、uh, which size I should knit to match the final garment size. 
So for from the pattern, the original pattern says uh, the size S will give you a width of 48 centimeter of the garment, and the size XL will give you a width of finished garment of 60 centimeter, and the prescribed gauge is 18 stitches every 10 centimeters and from my own swatch I find that my gauge is 23 stitches of 10 centimeters and if I am to knit the XL size I will get a garment of width actually uh, is the 60 and times 18 divided by 23, like there is a shrink rate by changing the gauge of 18 over 23, and you did this calculation, I will have a final width of 47 centimeter if I am to knit with my gauge of the XL size, which will match roughly the S size of uh, 48 centimeter. So I decided to go with the XL size. So you can do the same thing, like if you cannot meet the gauge and your gauge is a bit differently, then you can calculate how much your garment will shrink or expand by, uh, by your new gauge, and you can select the size that will match the final size that you want to have. So that might be a handy calculation for you to learn. Um, but another problem with doing this a different size is that uh, on the front you can see it has this like bralette kind of uh, contour of this uh, of this lacy pattern but uh, due to I knitted the XL size instead of the S size and the roll gauge probably didn't match perfectly so the original uh, in the original pattern, this stockinette part probably starts at uh, like here, but in my finished garment, the stockinette started a little bit higher, maybe from here. And if I am to knit this garment again, I might also like do a few more uh, lace rows around here just to have just to make this lacy outline a little bit deeper. Uh, but this is fine. Uh, I like this design. The first, the front panel have this like bralette kind of uh, contour, whereas on the back, it's just a horizontal lacy. And this lace pattern is actually not as hard as it seems. It is only a seven stitch repeat and a seven stitch by four rows repeat, so it's very easy to remember, especially as you uh, have done a lot of them in a short amount of time. Also, here is the construction of this garment. The original pattern says you should start from the bottom, do the ribbing, and do a lot of stockinette, and then at uh, about here, like at below the armhole, you split the front and back. So the fr uh, you knit the front and back separately, bottom up, uh, so that you can do these lacy patterns and as well as do some shaping for the neckline and then you do the kitchener stitch at the top of the shoulder. So here you can see the kitchener stitch uh, line where it kind of forms this diamond shape. And then you pick up stitches around the arm to knit the short sleeves. And then you pick up stitches around the neck to knit a few ribbings. But the problem I had was that I only have four balls of this yarn and I'm not sure if I would have enough yarn to finish the whole garment as the pattern says. So instead, I cast it on using the provisional cast on. So basically, I use a different yarn to make a crochet chain and I pick up stitches from that crochet chain and I started from about the chest like I knitted perhaps about 10 rounds of stockinette and then I start uh, I started to do the separate front and back panel front and up and then I did every 
all the interesting things above, and then I undo my provisional custom and knit from top down. So usually for a garment, I would prefer a top down approach than a bottom up approach because then I can decide how uh, long I want this garment to be and you can also try it on and also you can get to the interesting part at first like now it already looks like a garment whereas if you start from bottom up it only looks like a full garment until you finish everything including the shoulder so it will just give me a bit more motivation so for me personally i would like to uh, start something more difficult, more challenging, more fun, and then do the stockinette. The stockinette is actually very hard for me. It's not techni technically it's different, it just, uh, it just needs a lot of patience and I kind of do it a lot when I'm on the bus, when I'm on the commute, uh, because then I I don't I don't get too bored. I usually get bored very fast if I'm just doing stockinette stitch. I usually have to watch TV or something to do the stock and that stitch. <laughs> anyway, uh, here I am on my last ball of yarn and I think I will definitely have enough. So I put a stitch marker here, this one. Uh, when I added in my third ball of yarn and this stitch marker marks where I just added my last ball of yarn. So I know this is how long I can knit with one ball of this yarn. And I think given this, I, I think I definitely would have enough yarn. I probably would finish the garment earlier, like to give it a cropped look. And I am also deciding if I want to add another like lazy repeat just before I finish um, because I feel there are too much stockinette in this t-shirt and uh, I just want to give it sort of a personal touch. Normally I don't like to knit everything as the pattern directed otherwise I feel like I am just a uh, a machine. Uh, I want, since I'm knitting something for myself, I always want to give it like something of my own signature to, to state that this is something that I made. Uh, so maybe after a few stockinette stitch, I would want to knit some lacy like flower pattern again and then like knit about this much and then I will finish everything with a very short ribbing. Maybe that will be what I do. Uh, but also I, I cannot, I cannot just knit with this lacy pattern because this pattern, this lacy pattern is knitted bottom up. Uh, whereas now I'm knitting top down, so the other direction. So if I am still following the same pattern, then this, um like uh, then this lavender flower will be flipped and um, that's probably not right so i kind of have to figure out a different lacy pattern that is the that is like the opposite direction of this one and i will i will figure it out maybe i should try it on for you and see how it looks like just by like that. I think it looks quite cute even if I haven't blocked it yet. I think maybe after the blocking this will be a bit more drapey and I already like this knitted fabric very much. It's uh, quite cool and breathe, uh, and breathes quite well and the color is pretty good. I like these kind of cool colors. Uh, yeah, I'll, and I'll just knit maybe this much and then do a small uh, lazy section and then I'll finish it off. I probably won't need a full ball of this yarn, I'll probably have some, some left. I'll change back. 
And the other, th the other work in progress I had is uh, uh, animal friends. If you have followed my channel for a while, you know I have uh, knitted a few animal friends, like this one, Animal Doll, uh, following this book by Louise Crowder, The Knitted Animal Friends. And I am knitting my third animal, which is this fox. I have a friend who is having her wedding at the end of this year. She's back in China and she asked this uh, animal doll as her wedding gift. Uh, and since the shaping will take long, so I want to finish knitting this animal as soon as possible and then ship to her. And also since it's summer, it's good to work with cotton and linen yarn instead of wool. So. Uh, this, these animals are made with a sheep J stone washed yarn. So it's a cotton acrylic yarn, uh, not quite warm. So it's good to knit in the summer. I have knitted the little dress for the fox for a while ago. This little dress that she's wearing inside and I knitted with the whole scar woolly yarn. I knitted this a while ago last year where I also uh, make my little rabbit to wear it. All these animals in this book are of the same size so um, they, they can so their clothing are interchangeable which is quite fun and I have finished one arm, <laughs> no, a pair of arms of the fox and now I am working on the legs. I am working on the legs. I have knitted this much. Uh, the w previously when I was making these animals, I just knit uh, each leg and each arm separately and <coughs> recently inspired by the knit two socks at once method i am knitting two arms at once and then knitting two legs at once just so that uh, i can uh, i can read the instruction once and i will have the same length of these uh, legs. Like when I was first knitting my rabbit, uh, I, I sort of messed up the counting of the rows and one leg was longer than the other one and I had to count them many times and rip back so that the two legs are of the same length. And now I don't have to worry about that with the two legs at a time technique. And this leg is of contracting colors. It's the same as my sloth. The foot is a contrasting color and the whole leg and the instep of the foot is another color. And this is just simple striping color technique. Like in the bottom you use the white yarn and then here you start using the uh, orange yarn and you do some shaping for the foot and you cast off a bunch of stitches on the instep and then you keep knitting flat and uh, after you finish everything you will stuff the animal and sew so you will sew the sole of the foot and the instep of the foot um, to form a round foot like that and I think the reason that they are knitting these things in the flat instead of in the round is that uh, you can like sew as well as stuffing the animal so that you will have a tight stuffing. Actually some other like knitted animal patterns do let you to knit in the round but then you have to knit in the round as well as put in the filling whereas for this one you are you finish knitting all these like skins of the animal and then you sew and then fill in them. So it's a different approach, uh, wh whichever you prefer. So I'm just following the pattern in the book. That's my progress on the fox. Uh, and in the future, I will also be knitting the body and the head and the tail of the fox and little ears. And it, for the body that will include some intarsia to do the different sections to the, do the belly and the back and we'll, I'll show you that when I am there.
That is all the work in progress I have. And I also have a few swatches and plans for other knitting projects. The first swatch I have is this stripey one. And this is for the June top by Petite Knit. I have been looking for a pattern for a camisole or a, a sleeveless summer top kind of pattern. And a lot of them are more uh, like the sexy tab, which I don't want. I just want to have a simple pattern that I can stick to. And I have been looking and looking, and the other day when I was uh, look, looking at my Instagram and saw the dream pattern, and that is everything I wanted. Uh, I want to have like a basic pattern that covers the, like have a thicker strap that can cover uh, the bra and also like the back of the bra, but also uh, can reveal enough skin to feel cool in the summer. And June and June top does all of that. And also, I recently got this book. Uh, this is a lacy pattern book. There are 280 lacy patterns. Uh, this book is again from the Japan Book Xia, the Japanese publishing house, which features a lot of uh, knitting designs. And in this book, it's showing you a bunch, a bunch of lazy patterns. And it has lazy pattern of flowers, leaves, uh, form, which is like a geometrical shape, lines, waves, and combination with cabling patterns. And uh, I, I just, I am just so keen on uh, using some pattern from this book. I want to put some uh, stitch patterns into this summer top design. And this June top will allow me to do that. I have the yarn I intended for that is still this China hemp cotton yarn from Hui Gui Xian, a LARP yarn from China. I ordered two balls of white and two balls of this dark navy blue. And I know that I won't have enough yarn if I'm just using a, one single color to make uh, a garment, uh, but together I should be able to make one. So I decided to make some stripes. And also I selected a pattern from this book, which is, so I selected this pattern, this wavy arrow like pattern from this book. I'm not sure if this book is av available in English, uh, but you should be able to buy the Chinese or the Japanese version. I'll try to find a purchase link and put them in below. These are the swatches I did. I, so I don't want the stripes to be of the same width and I, I want to find the perfect ratio between the white and the dark blue. And this is the ratio I end up with, which is 16 rows of white and 10 rows of blue. Uh, and if you've heard about it, th there is a ratio called the golden ratio in mathematics. And that number is 1.618, blah, blah, blah. It's an in infinite length number. And basically 16 rows of white against 10 rows of blue. That is very close, 1.6. That's very close to the 1.618 golden ratio. So this is my golden ratio. <laughs> <laughs> this is my golden ratio stripes and I initially I wanted to add the lacy stitch pattern into the dark blue as you can see it doesn't pop out very much uh, so perhaps because the lacy part appears in the shadow which is dark and it doesn't give enough contrast to show on the fabric so I again put this lacy pattern in the white stripe and now it shows pretty well so i just decided to keep the navy blue stripe as solid and then add this lacy pattern onto the white uh, and by the way the june top there are two versions uh, 
I am going to knit the light version and the other is a DK version which you use 4 millimeter needle and this light version you use fingering weight uh, yarn which is the yarn I have and 2.5 millimeter needle and it gives you a 28 stitches against 10 centimeters gauge uh, which I have met the gauge perfectly with this yarn and 2.5 millimeter needle oh, and it has a I-cord bind off of two stitches uh, from the original design and I decided to use a contrasting color yarn which will be the dark blue to do this edging which I think will be kind of cute so I just tested this out uh, this is the first time I learned how to do the eye cord bind off I've done the eye cord for like a bracelet before and it's not too different for the bind off and Petit Knit has videos for these uh, I first did a 3 stitch eye cord which gave you a slightly thicker edge and then I did the 2 stitch eye cord I haven't decided which one is better but I have time <laughs> I, I need to finish knitting my Provence top first and then uh, I'll start this stripey uh, June top if you want to knit the dream top, we can do this as a knit along. Uh, I don't know, let me know and I can like find a hashtag or something. I, I think it's always interesting to do a lot of modifications of original patterns and I think there are a lot of possibilities of doing uh, modifications on this dream top pattern and maybe you can add different stitch patterns on the dream top. I think it would be super cute. And the other swatch I had is this one. So last week I received another bunch of yarn from China. It's also from Hui Gui Xian or Love Yarn, the same company. It's like the best selling yarn company in China. And uh, this is their line of Cherish or Xi Wu. And this is a 73% wool and a 27% cotton yarn and it is beautifully heathered. If you've been with me for a while, you know I'm a sucker for green, blue, purple-ish colors. And this is like um, teal or like blue-grayish color with a little like purple dots. And I just like this yarn so much. And I got a sweater quality of this yarn and I wanted to knit a design from this book. This is a, this, uh, this is a pattern book from the Satnix Garn Company in Norway. I have seen they post a photo of this design and I just love this so much. This is their Gunsi Ganser, forgive my pronunciation. This is their Gunsi Ganser uh, design, which features some like uh, cable patterns, seat stitch. It is kind of similar to the Ingrid sweater by Petit Knit, but uh, the Ingrid sweater has a long, like, a thick ribbing section which I don't quite like and I would prefer these kind of designs and I, I it took me a lot of trouble to find this book uh, on the website they uh, they only sell this pattern if you buy their yarn but I have this Chinese yarn that I want to use for for this sweater so I actually bought this book from the Chinese stockist of Sadness Garn. They sell this book separately and have that book shaped to me in Canada. And this book is in English and German. It's, it's really weird. This is a Norwegian pattern design. I got it from China and the pattern is in English and German international. In the original pattern, this sweater is knitted with their double sunday, which is a DK merino yarn paired with their tin silk mohair, which is a silk mohair yarn. Um, and I 
And to pair with this, I went to my local yarn store and they find me this kid silk. The colorway is North Sea. This is similar weight, similar component as the Tin Silk Mohair. And this color matches my uh, Hui Guixian Cherish yarn perfectly. And this is my finished swatch. And I don't know if it shows perfectly in the camera. It looks so pretty. It has so many different colors. Like it, uh, the main is the green, but it also has those purple, yellow, white -ish shades, and it almost looks like jade. It's the first time that I work with silk mohair yarn, and I'm loving every bit of it. And my gauge is perfect as uh, prescribed by the book. Uh, so I look forward very much to knit this pattern when the weather cools <laughs> a little bit. But uh, I know it's gonna be a gorgeous sweater. Look at this swatch. This is by far my favorite swatch. And I'd also like to talk about my knitting journal. I decided to start this knitting journal because uh, previously I kept all my uh, knitting notes on Ravelry. Uh, but I find it takes me a lot of time to click through these projects and wait for the project to load. And it also is hard for me to compare across different projects every time like I have to open a lot of tabs to compare across my projects. So I think it would be easier if I just use the plain old handwritten notes. And this is how I organize my handwritten knitting journal. So I have uh, two parts. The first part I am using them to write down my sweater or full garments. And the second part I write about my accessories like my socks. And on the back I have a few pages where I write down all the information about the common yarn that I like to use and I find this is quite handy. So I categorize for the yarn, I categorize them by, oh maybe I'll change to a page of English. <laughs> I, I write in Chinese and English at the meantime and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's only for me, right? <laughs> so I keep them uh, as a brand and then the line and the weight against length ratio and the composition, the needles it's recommended to use and the gauge. And I categorize them by fingering and then spores and decay and then worsted and iron, which is empty for now. Uh, and I divide them into different usages, like this bit of the fingering weight yarn are the woolen yarns that I commonly use, and then here are some summer yarns, and then here are some mohairs that I usually pair with other things, and then here is the sock yarn. And same for the sports and DK weight, I have a, a, a group of woolen yarns and I have a group of summer like linen or cotton yarns. And this saves me a lot of time because I find myself usually just think about some yarn and I have to go to the website to check and then later I forget and then when I want to compare again I have to go to the website to find all these information all over again or I have to dig through my yarn labels to uh, compare across different uh, yarns and that just takes a lot of time. I, I'd, I'd probably save a lot of time just by writing things down because usually I find that I have to substitute yarn a lot for different projects um, maybe sometimes due to uh, money, like due to affordability, some yarns are cheaper. And when you are substituting yarn, you would want to match everything like the composition and the like weight to length ratio and the gauge they can achieve as much as possible. And it's nice to uh, keep track of all the options, all the common options I have in one place. Uh, so that I know, like, if I can't have Jamieson's Jetland Spring Drift, then I can perhaps go to the Host Super Soft. 
or like if I cannot get sentence Tin Li Nan, I can go to this uh Hui Gui Xian Su Yu Yan and they will give me similar gauges. And let's talk about how I keep track of my uh, sw uh, notes on the sweater. Here is a note that I wrote for my purple cardigan uh, number eight. And uh, the entries I have are the pattern or design from and the category, like the, the this is a sweater and a cardigan and then the gauge, the needle size, and the yarn I use, and I also wrote down the uh, color name and the lot number. Uh, so it's nice to keep track of the lot number because uh, usually from this yarn, if the lot number is different, uh, even if they are from the same color way, they might just look a little bit different. So. Uh, it's a good information to have. And then finished size, I keep track of the width and the length of the garment and I also comment on which size I knitted. And then I keep track of some notes. And the best thing I love about the notes is that I can draw the diagrams. So I, let's see if I don't expose any information. Uh, so I just draw some simple uh, schematics of this garment, like I cast on at the neck band, and then I do s how I did the increases to knit the back, and how I knitted the shoulder panel, and how I knitted the sleeves, and I also wrote down what modifications I did. So for this garment, uh, I actually changed the, the decreasing rate on the sleeves a little bit. So I was able to write down that information here alongside the schematics. And for each of these garment, I draw, I draw these schematics. I show this to my friend and they say it is showing <laughs> how much of an engineering nerd you are. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Oh, and I also keep track of like the date of start and finish of this garment. And I do this for my accessories similarly, just that I don't uh, have the space to do the, to draw the schematics um, because I, I don't think I'll need that information. Yeah, I think it, it is very handy to have a handwritten knitting journal with you. And especially that I want to uh, proceed with some knitting designing. So it's good that I can compare across different sweaters and I can quickly learn their constructions and compare across the differences and then uh, think about the advantages and disadvantages of certain design. And then I can draw inspirations for my own design in the future. So I think I'm going to work on my next design soon, which would be a sweater, which would be super challenging, but I will do it. I will do it for the winter. And this is my preparation, first step towards becoming a nichewear designer. So that will be everything I have to show for this episode. It is a rather short episode. And let me know if you like shorter episode or like my longer one hour-ish episodes. And I always play a piece of piano at the end of my podcast. And today the piece that I'm going to play is by Jan Tiersen. Uh, I went to his concert last week and he uh, made the soundtrack for the French movie Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain. Forgive my French. Uh, and the song I'm going to play is called Conte d'un autre aide, which means uh, like story of a different summer, which fits in the summer weather pretty well. And hope you enjoy. Uh, if you enjoyed what I talked about and would like to support me by buying me a coffee, you can visit uh, coffee.com slash seedling stitch uh, to buy me a coffee or become a monthly member. And I am, I am making these uh, knitting podcasts every other week, or if I'm not making podcasts, I will make some uh, Japanese knitting mini lesson videos. 
uh, and I am on uh, Instagram as SD underline Athena or if you search Seedling Stitch you find me and I'm on Ravelry as Athena Liu and you can find all the patterns and books that I talked about uh, in, on my Ravelry uh, as well on all the links in the description below and thank you for watching thank you for taking the time to knit with me and let me know what projects you are knitting while watching my episodes and hope you enjoy my piano playing at the end and enjoy the summer or enjoy the winter if you if you are in the other side and happy knitting bye see you next time